I was casting about on the internet the other day and I found something a bit unexpected, a little out of the ordinary. No, don't worry, this isn't that Top Gear joke of old, it's related to the channel. Anyhow, it made me ponder on the longevity of EVs. There is that persistent question from ICE owners about how long an EV will last and what we'll do if the battery fails. This might go some way to addressing that question. In preparing the last video, I was casting about on Autotrader for second-hand cars. Autotrader is the most prolific second-hand car listing website in the UK, so it's a good place to keep an eye on the market. Anyway, I was looking for Kia Nero's, both in petrol hybrid and electric form, with which I did some comparisons on depreciation and running costs. I'll link to that video from the end screen in case you haven't seen it. The outcome was interesting. When looking for those cars, I found this white 2019 Nero EV, which was listed for the sort of price I would expect, about £10,500 or so. After having put out the video, I changed my search criteria to see what else there was, just out of idle curiosity, and happened upon this. This is a 2021 car, but it was only seven and a half grand. That seemed cheap. When it first hit Autotrader, there were only a couple of photos. It was not all that well marketed at that point, although that has improved now, so we can see a bit more of it in this updated listing. Did you spot it? Not to worry, we're getting there. Anyway, my curiosity got the better of me. I had to go and see it. And here it is. It was rather squashed into the corner of a small sales lot. To be fair, they did offer to get it out for me, but I reckoned I could see enough to work out what I was interested in. It's not in bad nick, a little unloved perhaps, with a number of light scratches down the passenger side and a few slightly heavier ones in the bonnet, as well as a few small chips in that area. There are a couple of small dinks in the driver's door as well, so it's not exactly pristine on the outside. However, with a decent polish, perhaps a detail by somebody good, it might look okay. The interior is pretty good. There's a little wear on the bolster on the driver's seat, and I didn't get a photo, but the brake pedal showed a bit of wear as well, that's unusual for an EV. But it's not bad, all in all, considering. Yeah, down there, bottom right, see it? 251,000 miles. That little unassuming Nero here has driven as far as the moon. To say that it's traveled an astronomical number of miles in its four year life is not unreasonable. It really has. It's been doing about 58,000 miles a year, on average 4,800 miles per month. It's been working hard. No wonder it is showing a few little battle scars, but it's probably not done yet. Here's what the GOM says, the onboard gasometer. At 29% state of charge, it's got 83 miles of remaining range. That means at full charge, it would show 283 miles. In temperatures of 18 degrees or so on this day, that's about what the car would show when new. So this simple, although not entirely accurate measurement, suggests that the battery seems to have soaked up the miles pretty well. I think I would want to confirm that with a full charge and then a decent test drive to see what happens as you cover some miles. Furthermore, a proper battery health check would be interesting, although I suspect it would tell you the same thing. That test drive would also be important to check that there is no whining or grating from the motor or reduction gearbox. We want to check that the servicing has been done to a good standard. What this might need is some work on the suspension, as that might have worked overtime, and a check of the brakes, plus four new tyres. But I reckon it's got useful life in it yet. Okay, so why has it done this many miles? It's had only one owner, but here's the clue of who that was. It was owned by Otto Cars, who rent out private hire cars, very often to Uber drivers. So it's been a taxi, not a great surprise. 
That fits with the mileage of course, but it also explains the torn door seal on one rear door and the dent from the seatbelt having been slammed in the door a time or two. Just for fun, why don't we see what it costs the driver during its life? Well, at today's prices anyway. With Autocar, rental is an all-in cost. It includes all of the servicing, maintenance, MOTs, insurance and vehicle licensing needed. On the website, we can see that we can rent a Nero Electric for £269 per week or a plug-in hybrid for £10 a week less, saving about £2,000 if we go with the hybrid, excluding fuel. On to the fuel costs. I've used the WLTP efficiency of the plug-in hybrid. That's a bit higher than for the mild hybrid we looked at last week and quite unlikely in the real world, but we'll overlook that today. This plug-in hybrid has an electric range of only 26 miles, so I've assumed it will run on electricity for about 9% of the time. That might be a bit generous as well. Then I've used a cheap supermarket fuel price of just over £1.30 per litre for the rest. Meanwhile, for the electric, I've gone with my measured electricity costs again. That's made up of a mix of home charging and a bit of public charging. I think that's reasonable. If we assume that those 4,800 miles per month it has been covering were split over 20 work days a month, that's only 240 miles per day on average. That's about the minimum range we should get in this car year round. That suggests there wouldn't be much need for public charging it, assuming the driver can charge at home. As you can see, they would save about £11,000 on fuel with the electric giving us total costs of use of 66 and 75,000 pounds, a saving of about 9,200 pounds for going electric. To keep things simple, I've ignored the price for the Uber Clean Air Plan in these calculations. That was a reduced rental price for using an electric car as a taxi in London, which could have offered an additional 3,000 pounds in savings if the driver had been eligible. Now this car shouldn't be a surprise to me. After all, Mr. Kia e Nero Diaries covered a few Neros in France that had done 500,000 kilometers a few months ago. That's 310,000 miles. However, those were a bit older, I think. So this car has racked up its miles somewhat quicker. But I thought I'd add it to the growing body of evidence suggesting EVs should last a good long time. We've seen some Teslas do 450,000 miles so far, and those are probably still going strong too. But it's nice to know that it's not just Teslas that can munch those miles. Oh, and just for completeness, I should highlight a couple of Nero hybrids with high miles too. There are two on Autotrader with over 150,000 miles, but none with more than 200,000 miles just yet. I can completely understand why people are suspicious of lithium-ion batteries. After all, our greatest exposure to them is in mobile phones, and we will have experienced the runtime of them degrade over time. The thing is, lithium-ion batteries come in many flavours, many formulations, and the one used for your phone is very different to the ones going into cars. We want a mobile phone to be as small as possible, and so manufacturers use chemistries that maximize power density. But there's a trade-off. Those chemistries degrade faster. Furthermore, a mobile phone battery sits in a small case with a hot processor right next to it and no active cooling system. So it gets very hot, especially if you allow it to rapid charge. In contrast, an EV has an active cooling system. Well, everything other than the Nissan Leaf that cooling system manages the battery temperature very closely and especially when rapid charging. So not all lithium-ion batteries are created equal. The ones for phones degrade quickly, but the ones in EVs do not, as demonstrated by this Nero with 251,000 miles under its belt. If you are worried about the battery in an EV lasting just a few years, a few tens of thousands of miles, then I'd say you are worrying about the wrong thing. By the way, your mobile phone has settings that help you better manage its battery, just like EVs. There's a setting to protect the battery by not charging to 100%. 
and another to disable the very fastest charging speeds. However, these settings are off by default in a mobile phone, whereas they are on by default in an EV. That should tell us something about the manufacturer's thoughts on longevity. Oh, and one more thing. The battery in an EV is warranted for a minimum of eight years. They are required to be by clauses in the UK's ZEV mandate, but the warranties existed even before that. OK, over to you. Tell me, how do you feel? Are you still worried about EV batteries, despite cars like the one I've shown today? Or have you got first-hand experience of a high-mileage EV that you can share with us? Let me know in the comments below. If you've liked this week's video, then it would be a huge help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And I would love to have you as a subscriber of the channel if you want to see more from me. Thanks.